Okay, so let's say you had two different circles. So I'm just going to make circle A and let's make circle C. Okay, and they're just randomly created. Um, how could I prove that this circle is similar to that circle? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. A circle is defined as two, you know, has really two key parts to it. So a circle is defined as all the, the points. So a circle is defined as the set of points that are, oops, are equidistant to a center point. So in order to define one, a, a circle needs the distance defined, which is the radius, so that we know that everything is equidistant, and a circle needs the center defined. So if we think about it, uh, what we need to do to make one circle similar to another to prove that circles are similar is prove that um, you know one circle can be transformed into another circle by changing its center and changing the distance. So we're going to do that. We're going to change the center and ch let's let's get this over here a little bit. We're going to change the center and change the distance by using a, a rigid and a similar transformation. So we'll begin by making a rigid transformation. So I'm going to go to my transformations here. It says translate by vector. I want to do a translation. Oh boy, let's try that again. We're going to translate the object. So I want to translate the circle and distance and direction of this vector here from A to C. And now I have two circles, right? This circle here, uh, it's called circle C. If you can look up here, it says circle C. And circle C prime, which is a translation of C by vector U. There's vector U, okay? But they're not, these two are not the same circle. It doesn't map onto it. They just have the same center. So now what I need to do is I need to dilate this circle by this center. So how am I going to dilate it? Well, let's, let's measure the old radius and measure the new radius. Now remember that the, um, the way to dilate is to multiply, okay? We multiply the current radius by, or the, the current distance by the scale factor. And the scale factor is going to be new over old. So in this case, our new uh, length is going to be, um, let's see, 3.47. That's our new length right here. And our old length was right here, right? Let me, let me click on that or hover over that. That's 2.02. .02. Now, these are rounded numbers, so they're not exactly perfect. But our ratio that we'll make will be the dilation is going to be by the ratio of new distance over the old distance. So here we are. We're going to do a dilation. Oops, that's a translation. A dilation of this new circle from this center. And the factor is going to be the new measurement, which was 3.47, over the old measurement, 2.02. .02. And the beauty of that is when we multiply every point's distance, the 2.02s are going to cancel out and we'll have just a new distance of 3.47. And now you can see that these circles are going to be identical. Circle D, which is a circle through D with center C. And circle C double prime, which is C prime dilated by factor 1.72 from C. So we have turned them into the same exact circle. So that, that's how I've proven that we and we did that through what we call a similar a similarity transformation or a similar transformation which was a combination of a rigid transformation the translation by vector u and a similar transformation which was the dilation okay and um, so now all we need to do is prove that, that can be done for any circle so I'm going to get up my camera and show you how that proof is done okay so to do a proof of this we've got to use some generic names so I'll make you know 
I will make two circles in my diagram. We'll call that circle A. It's not drawn all that well. And then I'll make a new circle, circle B. Okay? And then what happens is I will make the radius of A equal to X and the radius of B equal to Y. Now the way I would write this out is I would say let circle A be placed in the plane with center A and radius X. Let circle B be placed in the plane with center B and radius Y. So that explains that there are two different centers, two different um, variables, or radius, radii, two different radii, and because there's two different amounts in those areas, it could be any amount. Because these are variable amounts, we could plug in any numbers, and so therefore this, whatever we're about to do, would work for any any set of two, of two circles. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to give the instruction first to translate circle A in distance and direction. Remember, a translation is done in a distance and direction of a vector. And the notation we use for vector is we put a little line like that over whatever it is we're going to write. And here I'm going to call it vector A, B. Okay, which is the vector that connects A to B. There is the vector. So now once we take this entire circle and we slide it over here, we're going to have circle that exists here is kind of ugly. <laughs> but we'll call this one A prime. So now we're going to that's the new circle. The only thing we know about is it has a center at B. So the second step now is going to be to dilate circle A prime with a center or focus of the dilation. We call it a center of dilation um, at point B and a scale factor could write K, right? I started to write it there. Scale factor of, remember it's new over old. So our new measurement is Y over our old measurement is X. So I know that if I were to do that, we would go, it would shrink down. Because what we do is we take our old measurement X, the radius here, we would multiply it by our scale factor K. So in this case, X times y over x and what happens when we do that multiplication is the x is canceled and the new measurement is y so we would have now a new circle a double prime so we would say as a double prime is the same circle as b and is the result of a similar transformation which was a translation then dilation circle A is similar to circle B and that will be true for any two circles. So there's my proof. That's how you'll do yours.